Makers, makers, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jeanette Fryer. I'm the owner and maker of Javel Sheet. So you guys, first and foremost, I know it has been a minute since I have put up some a video and I deeply apologize for that, but I have been going through some med medical issues. I've been having this horrible shoulder pain and you guys, I'm just trying to figure out what is causing that. So hopefully I get some answers to that soon. I do have some medication that is keeping that under control, but it is not 100% cured at the moment. So you guys, I would really appreciate all the prayers that you can give me. And it's just one of those things where I just had to just take a break from YouTube and just try to, you know, take care of myself and just try to get my body back to 100%. So hopefully I'm on the road to recovery. And I'm just really excited that I am feeling a lot better than I was a couple of months ago. So first and foremost, I just want to say Happy New Year. I know I am behind the curve on that, but you guys, I cannot let that go unsaid. So Happy New Year and welcome back to my channel. So to kick off 2024, I thought I would do a new beginner Tumblr tutorial video just to highlight some of the new processes that I use in my Tumblr making and just, you know, just to give the new Tumblr makers just coming on board just some new ideas and some new insight as to how to create Tumblr. So I really hope this, vi this video is helpful. So makers, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And once again, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. And I think that is enough for me. Let's get into the video. Let's go. All right, makers, let's go ahead and get this video started. So I do have a beginner's Tumblr tutorial that I have posted on my channel before about two years ago. However, a lot of my processes have changed and I decided to do a new video to kind of update a lot of those processes. So today we're going to be doing a kind of, well, a new beginner's Tumblr tutorial. I am going to be covering all of the beginning steps, although all the way from the beginning to the end. And if I miss something, you're more than welcome to go back and watch that previous video that I did before. It covers a lot more in depth. However, I am going to go in depth with this video. So bear with me. It is going to be kind of a long video. But like I said, I recorded the video two years ago and I do want to kind of update my processes that I've been working on since then. All right. So I am going to explain the steps and the supplies that I use as I go instead of just laying them out and, you know, like I did before or as I should. But I'm just going to explain the supplies as I go. I think that it'll be more easier. So in case you forget something, you just go back to that point in the video and just recap on the supplies that I use in that step. All right. So here I am starting out with a 20 ounce skinny. I think this is from the Stainless Steel Depot. I will link the name of that company below in the description box. So I have not done anything with this tumbler, just open it up and we're ready to go. All right, so I am just gonna take the lid off. Most of these tumblers do come with a, a, you know, a tinted lid or a clear lid like this one. All right, so we just have a clean, fresh tumbler, you guys, just a clean, fresh tumbler. So in order to get your tumbler ready for the epoxy process and the glittering process and all of that fun stuff you may have been seeing on YouTube, we have to prep the tumbler first. All right, so what we're gonna do to prep the tumbler first, I do not glitter my tumblers at the top and the bottom. I do leave a little of the stainless steel showing from the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna show you how I do that process. All right, so in order to leave a little of the stainless steel at the top and the bottom, I'm going to simply take a Sharpie marker. This is a fine point. And all you have to do is just lay it, lay the marker down. And I've been doing this for years. I just lay it down and I just take the cup and I just roll it around the marker. And you see you have a line. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom. And now we have a crisp line at the bottom as well. All right, makers. So now that we have our line at the top and the bottom, we're going to get ready to prepare our tumbler for the taping process, which I like to call. So I have a Turner tum a tumbler insert that I did get from a shop on Etsy. I will list that shop below. I also have been using another shop for inserts as well for my um, tumbler inserts, and that those companies are really great. I would definitely link those below. 
I am using a Turner by MH Turners as well. I've been using that Turner since 2019, 2020, and it has been the best. It has not failed me yet. It is a five cup Turner, and y'all, I am so in love with that. It is a beast. It is a beast, and it definitely gets the job done. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pop this little insert in here. And you guys, I did want to make a correction. This um, cup is from the, I'm not going to say Stainless Steel Depot, Magnolia. I think it's Tipsy Magnolia now. So I will link the name of that shop below. It's really nice turners. They do have this little removable bottom that I like to work with. But for this beginner, beginner tutorial, I am not going to remove that but y'all it's so fun to kind of put glitter in that removable bottom i do have some more videos as to how i showed how it worked when i removed this bottom and y'all it's so fun all right so like i said we have lined off the top and the bottom so now i'm going to get ready to use our tape this is some electrical tape that i got from home depot and y'all i buy this stuff by the bundles because i use it a lot and it does not fail it's not stretchy it's kind of like a a vinyl tape and it, it's just the best all right so i'm simply just going to place my tape here and using that where i put that marker i'm just going to roll the tumbler along that line and you're going to meet up at the opposing end like that all right so you clip that off and i just like to get my tape and just squish the ends together and then fold all this excess over the bottom like so all right so the reason why i put the insert in here is because when you get the tape on you can't put the insert in here because it's going to mess everything up because you're just going to be squishing the insert you know over the tape so i'm going to do the same thing with the bottom with the top all right, makers, so we have our tape done at the top and the bottom. Everything is nice to go. So the next step, we are going to prep our tumbler. So in order to do that, I have just a little piece of sandpaper. I think this is about, um, I would say, 120 grit or something like that. Anything just to rough it up. Just does not have to be this specific grit or anything like that. Just anything to rough the tumbler up. You can use a sanding block or anything like that. So I buy these in a big old sheet. Um, and I just kind of, you know, cut little pieces off. And I use this multiple times until I can't use it anymore. So what you want to do is just take the tumbler, I mean the sandpaper, and just rough it up. You just want to get a nice scuffed up surface. And you'll see it start scratching it and everything like that. So... Just continue to do that all the way around. I normally do it about two or three times just to ensure that I got a good, just, uh, just to ensure that I've scuffed it up pretty good. So everything is nice and you can see everything starts coming off in this on the table or whatever you're using and you can see everything is you know kind of dusty so you may want to have some gloves on or you know a mask on because it does you know kind of leave some dust all right makers uh, before we go on I did want to point out this is my craft table and on top of my craft table I do have a the doggy um, wet pool pads and y'all, they work so great because when you make a mess, instead of making a mess on your craft table, you can just take this off and just fold it up and the mess goes with it and you can put it in the trash can and it's done. All right, so the next step is we have to get all of this sanded residue off the cup. So I just have some old cleaning rags here. Doesn't have to be anything special. I've recycled these plenty of times. And so... I'm just going to take some alcohol that I put in a spray bottle. I think I got this bottle from Walmart. Just any type of bottle, you can just put your alcohol in. So put this in here. And we're going to take all of this dirty, sanded, stainless steel residue off of the tumbler. And I normally do it about two times. So I don't know if you can see from the camera, but everything is nice and scuffed up 
and ready for the next step. All right, makers, so now we're ready for the next step. So I typically like to use to base paint my glitter because it kind of base paint my tumbler before I glitter because it allows for a seamless coverage and you don't have to use so much of your glitter to cover your tumbler because you kind of have the same color as the glitter. So we're going to be using a green glitter in this tumbler. And this is by NMO Nicolette, Nicole Moret Original. NMO, this is called Margarita. And I think I'm just going to be using a filler. This is by It's Pretty Personal because this is a chunky and I kind of just want to fill it in with a little bit. So I won't have any gaps and everything is seamless. And this is called His Lime Green by It's Pretty Personal. All right, so like I mentioned before, I you typically want to base paint your tumbler so you have a seamless coverage and you're not having to use so much glitter. And that has always worked for me. So I'm going to be using a satin paint. This is called Eaton by Rust-Oleum. And I'm just going to paint this entire tumbler this satin green color. For this tumbler tutorial, I am going to keep it basic. Nothing, no processes would be too hard to learn because I am just going to keep it more basic just for this tumbler tutorial. So you guys get a full view of the entire tumbler making process. All right, so you guys, I am not going to take you outside as I paint this tumbler. I do live in a very windy city, so it is kind of windy outside. So I'm going to go outside and battle the wind of this painting this tumbler. But I'm sure you guys have painted something, you know, in the past before. If you do want to see the painting process, like I said, I do have another video where I go into depth and show that painting process. But you guys, it's just too easy. Just go outside in a well-ventilated area. You do not want to paint inside your home. Just paint outside in a well-ventilated area and just give the tumbler a nice, even coverage. It doesn't have to be thick, just a nice, thin coverage. That's all it takes, just nothing too extreme. You don't want any drips, just spray paint it nice and thin. So you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll be back for the next steps. Art makers, to move on, I did want to just recap on something. You don't have to exactly match your paint colors to your glitter. Just get it as close as you can. So that's just not a big problem. But, you know, just get it as close as you can to a potential match and you'll be fine. So I did let this dry for about 20 minutes. And because it is a satin paint, it really dries really fast. You do, you do want to avoid a gloss paint because it takes forever, forever to dry. That's just my experience, unless you put it in front of a space heater or something like that. But I always like to use a satin or a matte paint when I do my base coat on my tumblers. And once again, you can use a white paint. I just find that using some type of exact match or close to match of the glitter that you're using really helps to get that coverage that you're looking for. Art makers, so for this tumbler tutorial, we are going to be using the epoxy method to apply the glitter. And y'all, over the years, I have found that that is the best method. You can use, once again, you can use Mod Podge. I also have been using this glitter glue. This is by Crystal Like, and that is a good method to use as well. However, I find that using the epoxy method just gives me the best coverage and and I just think it's, you know, it's just been worse worker for me. So once again, you can use Mod Podge. And this glitter glue, glitter glue by Crystal Light is also another option as well. I will link the links to all of these products in the description box below. So for the epoxy method, we are going to be using, let me get the bottle so I can show you guys the exact bottle. All right, so apologies, I had to grab the bottle. So we are going to be using the Fast Set by Counter Cultural DIY. And you guys, this is what I've been using lately to apply my glitter just for the first coat only because it gives me the best coverage and I just really, really like using it because it allows me to essentially complete a tumbler or get it to the first step within a day. So I can at least apply the first coat of epoxy within a day and y'all, it has been working wonders. So again, this is kind of culture by DIY and this is the Fast Set Turbo version. This is a one-to-one -one ratio and it comes in a part A and a part B. All right, so makers, I have put part A and part B in these little honey squeeze jars, and you guys, over the years, I've learned, I've been using those other bottles, I forget what they're called, but 
these bottles have been working wonders. So they're easy, really easy to fill. So I just lab label each one by type of the type of epoxy that I'm using. And it's just so much easier to use because it just squirts out. I will show you later on. So for this method, you do want to make sure you're in a well ventilated area. You do want to have a, west, a respirator on and a mask on, I mean a respirator mask just to make sure that you're uh, protecting yourself for any fumes. You do want to use gloves. And for the mixing, we're gonna be using some small measuring cups and some popsicle sticks. All right, however, for this method, since I am trying to do a video, I am going to use a mask. Normally I use a full respirator, probably which I should, but like I said, I can't really talk, you know, right now I'm kind of hoarse. So I'm gonna use this mask which is offering some type of protection. However, you should always use a full respirator mask, all right, for this process. And you want to make sure you're using gloves as well. So we're gonna get on to parting out the epoxy. I'm gonna show you that entire process as well. All right, so to use the epoxy process, you really don't need a lot. However, but because these measuring cups are kind of hard to see the lines, always take a little Sharpie and I go about five mls and like I said, I probably won't even use that and I mark it. So when I apply the epoxy, I can see where I'm going because these cups are really, really clear. So in order for me to see, I think five mls has been working and you always can take the excess and apply it to a mold in order to use that. So we have our little lines and once again, I just use a Sharpie. So when I pour in the epoxy in, I know where to stop at because you can't see on these these really clear cups. All right, makers, so at this point, you do want to make sure you have your respirator on and your gloves on. So I'm going to just take part B. I'm going to start with part B. It doesn't matter which part you start with. And I just have the box of the tumbler up here so it can give me a little eye level. All right, makers, I just had to figure out why it wasn't squeezing. And I have part B here. And you guys can see how easy it is to fill. So I'm just squeezing really slow because we only put in five mLs in here. All right. So now I'm going to get our other cup. And we're going to get part A. And we're going to do the same thing. Okay. All right, so now that we have those, we can go ahead and mix. And I kind of always like to mix part A into part B since part B is a little bit more thicker. And you want to make sure you're taking your popsicle stick and you just scraping around the, the cup. You want to make sure you get as much or pretty much all of it out of here. And you see, I'm just taking the end of the popsicle stick and I'm just running it along the other cup. All right. And if you mix in large batches, this is where I have this tongue, tongue suppressor. I did get these from Amazon. And you can use a larger cup to pour the larger batches in. You will see that later on in the video to store that, to stir that larger batch. But since we just using a smaller batch here, I'm just gonna stir it in the, in the medicine cup. And there's really no rhyme or reason how long to stir. You, you know, I just kind of, over the years, just been kind of gauging how long I stir or how, as to how I feel comfortable that it's been stirred enough. And that's just been working. So I would say about one to two minutes. And as you're stirring, just make sure you're scraping along the sides because so everything gets mixed into part A and part B gets mixed collectively at the same time. And I do want to keep in mind that this turbo facet, 
will start curing on you really, really fast. So you have to work fast. All right. So keep that in mind. When you're doing the epoxy method using this turbo facet. All right, makers. So I think it's been stirred enough. So I am just going to take the epoxy, pour it on the tumbler. Use my gloved hand to smooth it out. And like I said, I am keeping in mind that I have to work fast because I am using this turbo facet epoxy. And since I'm using chunky, chunky glitter, I kind of will probably use all of this. So you just want to kind of spread it evenly. And you know, you guys remember when we had the tape lines at the top and the bottom, always make sure I go along with my thumb and just make sure that I'm just making sure I get right up against that edge. So when, it, when we remove the tape, we have those nice crisp lines. And I just really just take the, my gloved hand and I just pat it just to give the, the glitter, you know, some more adhesion. So when I'm doing the glittering process, I do like to just remove my gloves. I feel a little bit better doing that. So here I just have a piece of wide paper. So we're going to go ahead and just apply. I think I'm going to go in with some of this around the edges, the finer glitter, because I want that crisp line when I remove the tape. And I'm only doing that because I'm using the chunky glitter. All right, so I'm just gonna take this finer glitter and just go along the lines, the top and the bottom. And I'm still still keeping in mind, I know I'm saying that a lot, because you guys, you gotta keep in mind that when you're using this turbo fast set epoxy, everything seems like it just it just dries really fast on you. And you see how handy this dot, this puppy pad mat is coming in, in handy. I'm in is coming into play because I'm just like I'm making a mess, but I'm not really making a mess. So now we're gonna go on with this chunky. Apply that directly on top. And I'm gonna have to do another coat. So we're gonna dump that out. Gonna dump it back in the bottle. All right, so you guys, in order to get a second coat on my tumblers, I always like to use this right white rain extra whole hairspray. And you guys, it's been working wonders. I've been using this since 2019 and it works amazing. I've been finding this mainly at the Dollar Tree or the Dollar Store, and it's been working so well. So I just take the hairspray. I'm going to move this out the way, and I'm just going to spray, you know, directly on my little puppy pad mat here. So I'm not really making a mess on my original craft mat. So this hairspray is just going to act as another, I mean, a little extra adhesion. So when I apply the second coat of glitter it sticks and then it's going to stick over that other that that fine glitter that we did perfect all right so because i'm a little ocd i'm just going to take the tumbler i'm just going to roll it in the glitter Just to make sure I got good coverage. 
card makers. So now that we have our tumbler all nice and glitter, everything seems to be covered very, very nicely. I'm gonna take some parchment paper here. And I've been doing this a lot lately because it just helps me seem to get the glitter really flat. So I'm gonna take it at the very end and we're gonna roll the tumbler into the parchment paper all the way till it closes, till you, till you, till it closes up. And then I'm just gonna take my hands and I'm just gonna press. Make sure you're concentrating on the entire tumbler. If you, have to, if you have to adjust the parchment paper, just do that as well. So I'm just rolling it, pressing it, rolling it, pressing it. And because we're using the epoxy method, it is going to give it, it's going to, that glitter is just going to lay really flat in that epoxy. So you roll it until you just feel comfortable that everything is nice and flat. All right, makers, so like I said, you just roll it until you feel comfortable that everything is nice and flat. Concentrating on the top and the bottom, just really, really just press those edges in. All right, so I think that's, a, that's good enough. Perfect, looks so pretty. All right, so now I'm gonna get to removing that tape. You cannot leave this tape on here while this tumbler dries because the tape will stick to the tumbler and that is what you don't want. All right, so now I'm gonna remove that tape and you see we have those crisp, crisp lines. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing for the bottom portion, the top portion. Same thing, we have those crisp, crisp lines. Art maker. So I know this may seem a little overkill to some, but this is what's just been working for me. So I removed the, the parchment paper. So I'm not going to roll it again in the parchment paper. And the reason why I do this is because I want to make sure that I get those top and the bottom lines as flat as possible. So I don't have to do as much sanding. So I'm going to roll it again. However, this time I'm going to the bottom and the top and I'm just pressing those edges down and this is going to keep me from having to sand so much the top and the bottom edges so i'm just concentrating on the top and the bottom and then just concentrating on those edges just using my finger and just pressing everything down you can do a repress of the middle portion as well but like i said i'm just concentrating on the top and the bottom edges Everything is nice and flat. All right, makers, so let me show you the magic of using a puppy pad for your crafting area when you're doing glitter. You can just take all of this mess. I have my gloves here. I have the parchment paper. I have the mixing cup. I have the mixing sticks. I just have everything here. And I had this, I had this mat, this um, puppy pad to kind of taped to the table with some masking tape. So I'm just gonna roll everything up in it. And y'all look. My crafting table is still nice and clean. I really, really love that. It works so much for me. And I can just throw all of this mess in the trash and I don't have to worry about trying to clean up my crafting table. All right, maker, so since we did use the epoxy method, I am going to let this dry, however, I can let this dry since we did use that facet. I can let this dry for about, I'm going to say about an hour or so. And then we will be back for the next step. That is the magic of using this facet epoxy. It allows you to get to the first step, like covering your epoxy in the first coat of glitter, first coat of epoxy within the first day. So that's just my take on it. I do not like using the facet for my final coats of epoxy. It's just my preference, so we'll be, I will be showing you the next epoxy that I like to use for those methods as well. So we're going to let this dry, and I'm going to be back for the next steps. All right, so stay tuned. All right, makers, so this has been drying for about an hour, 
hour or so. So you can see the glitter is still kind of coming off on my hands. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go outside and spray a clear coat over this. This is going to essentially seal the glitter in. And the clear coat they're gonna be using is Two Times Matte Clear by Rust-Oleum. I've been using this brand to seal my glitter in for the longest and it has been, it's been great. So I'm not gonna take you guys along with me. I do, like I said, I do have an, another video where I showed me spray painting, you know, applying a clear coat to the tumbler. However, it is really an easy process. No science to anything. I'm just going to take this outside, spray a light clear coat over this. I am going to concentrate on the edges, the top and bottom edges, just to make sure I get those nice and crisp lines when I go to clean that up and just spray a light clear coat over the entire tumbler. You do not want it thick or gooey or anything like that. Just a light clear coat. I just normally do a rotation, about two rotations. Spray it really, really lightly, and we're good to go. Art maker, so now that we have sprayed our tumbler and with the Rust-Oleum 2 times Matte Clear by Rust-Oleum, I did put this in front of a space heater just to kind of speed up the drying process, but you don't want, I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, so normally you just want to let this dry at least 30 minutes just to make sure everything is nice and dry. So before we move on to our next step, we have to clean up the rim of the top and the bottom. So here I have just a regular microfiber cloth, um, cloth here, nothing special or anything like that. And I am going to take some acetone. I actually got this acetone from the Dollar Tree and it comes in this little bottle where you can squeeze and the acetone actually comes to the top. I've been using this for a couple of years now and it's been amazing. So, so when it gets empty, I just buy some regular acetone and just fill it up. I think I just actually love the bottle process. All right, so I'm just gonna take my little microfiber cloth here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna get the, if you see all this excess here, this excess glitter, you got probably got some overspray from the paint and everything like that. I'm gonna take all of that off and just clean it up so I have a nice clean rim. So you do wanna be kind of a little harsh. I'm using, I actually did my thumb, my nail on my thumb, just to get nice and close to that rim and just scrape any of this glitter that's kind of coming over the edge. So you can see that you're actually getting a lot of the paint overspray from the clear um, paint off, and that's actually coming off as well. But your main thing is you want to make sure that your rim is nice and clean. You don't have any overspray, any loose glitter at the top and the bottom because you want a nice clean edge. Like I said, I do not tape, I do not go all the way to the top and the bottom of my tumblers. I really like exposing some clear, I mean some stainless steel at the top and the bottom. So you see I have a really nice clean edge going on here. So we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the same thing at the bottom. Maker. So in preparation for the next step, we're going to get ready to apply our first coat of epoxy. So none of our top rim and our bottom rim is nice and clean. And we already just kept our tumbler turner in here. We did not move it. So that's ready to go. So I'm going to take that same electrical tape that I used in the beginning. And I am just going to apply it right up to the butt edge where the glitter meets the stainless steel. Don't leave any gaps. So just run that along there like so until you get around to the other edge and clip off and then I just pinch that together. Flip it over, do the same thing on the other end. Art makers, I did want to say one thing before we move on to applying our first coat of epoxy. So since I did use the epoxy method and I did use chunky, chunky 
glitter. My glitter is pretty much laying flat. However, if you want, if you don't think your glitter is flat enough and you need an extra layer of something before you apply the first coat of epoxy, you can mix about half and half of the glitter glue by Crystal Light and just take a paintbrush and apply a thin layer on top of that. And y'all, it works wonders. It makes your your process applying your first coat of epoxy it makes it so so smooth and i'm thinking for this video i am going to do that just to show you guys how that process works so but although my glitter is really flat i can get it to look better so what i'm going to do i'm going to take some glitter glue this is the glitter glue by crystal like I was thinking about not doing this step just to save time, but like I said, a lot of my processes have changed and I kind of want to give you guys the full thing. So let me run and get some water in this and a paintbrush. So these are just some little medicine cups. Like I said, I will link everything that I'm using in the description box below. There's no rhyme or reason. I just really want to thin this glitter glue out. So I just poured some water in here and you really don't really need all of this glitter glue. I probably get using too much. Stir it and mix it together. And what this is going to do is just make the cup smoother. So when you apply your first coat of epoxy, it is it's going to be so much easier. It's going to go on like butter. And you won't have to use, you won't have to apply too many coats before you go into your decal and all of that kind of stuff. So once I got that on there, I just have a regular paintbrush, nothing fancy. And you just take that glitter glue mixture and just coat the entire tumbler. One layer should be enough. You don't need to put a whole lot on here. The key is to make sure you're covering every inch. And like I said, this is an extra step. Um, but what I found that is that it really helps when you apply your first coat of epoxy when you're using chunky glitter. You don't have to necessarily do this when you're doing, when you're using fine glitter, when you're using chunky chunky glitter. <laughs> Y'all can't say chunky. Using chunky glitter, you kinda wanna do this step. It just makes it a lot easier. So once I figure I got a whole lot on here, I'm just gonna go back over the tumbler and just remove any of the excess. So I have some parchment paper here over my little puppy pad that I'm using. And when I get done messing this up, I can still use my puppy pad and just throw this parchment paper away. And what I'm gonna do, since I use too much glitter glue, I'm gonna pour that back in a bottle. It's not gonna affect the other part of the glitter glue. So this is just giving it another layer of between the epoxy and your first layer. It's just going to make it make the first coat of epoxy go on really smooth and you're not going to have to add too many coats of epoxy before you start your decal process. So I'm just going through each stroke and just making sure I don't have any bunching up any clumping, just getting a nice thin coat.
I know the light is kind of reflecting off this green color, but it's kind of make it hard to see because it's so bright. All right, so I am going to let this dry in front of a fan or a heater, probably a fan just to be on the safe side. I don't want to melt this tape off. And just when it's when it's uh, when I think it's really good to the touch, we're gonna go back and apply our first coat of epoxy. All right, so you want to let this dry fully. Do not go on to apply the first coat of epoxy because it will be cloudy if you do not allow the the glitter glue to dry thoroughly. So keep that in mind. All right, makers, let's go ahead and get started with the epoxy process. So here I have the tumbler. I don't know if you remember, we applied just half and half of the glitter glue by Crystal Light. I did allow that to dry overnight because I had some other things to do. So now it is fully dry and you still want to leave your tape on there because, you know, we're not finalizing this yet. We do have a, a couple more steps before we get to finishing up this tumbler. All right, so this little toner is what I got just for our YouTube videos, just so it can be small on my desk and I can demonstrate more. I would definitely show you um, my larger toner. I think I showed that in my previous beginning tumbler tutorial video as well, but I will show it to you guys again. But this little toner I just like to use for YouTube videos. I actually just got it. I don't think I've really had it that long. So we're going to be using this. This is actually from MH Turners. And it's just really nice and sleek when I'm doing a video and I can just have it on my desk and just without having to take my tripod over to my bigger area. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's move this out the way. So the epoxy that I like to use for my coats of epoxy is by the Amazing Clearcast. You can buy this in the in the one to one gallons online and that's what i normally do but i want to show you guys that you can get this from hobby lobby it is 20 23.99 and it is a one-to-one -one ratio and i've been using this since 2019 and it has not filled me yet i do have some other epoxies that i like to use as well however this is my go-to all right so i've already these are bottles that I've been using for quite some time. This is, like I said, it's a one-to-one -one ratio of A to B. And I got these little honey squeeze jars from Amazon. I would definitely link these below. In the past, when I first started, I was using some other bottles, but these have proven to be the best thus far. And I think I'm going to stick with these. So as you can see, I have them labeled A and B. All right, so for this process, again, you want to make sure you have gloves on. And just for the video, you want to also make sure you're using a full respirator mask. But for this, I'm just going to use my little mask here because I'm trying to talk and do this video at the same time. However, please keep in mind that during this step, when you're mixing epoxy, you do want to make sure you have a full respirator mask on, which I normally do at all times. All right. So I have my little popsicle. I mean, my little stick here. This is my bit bigger mixing stick. You will see how I use this in a minute. And my little popsicle stick. I've already measured my cups. For my epoxy, normally when I'm doing the first coat of epoxy, I like to use at least uh, 30 mLs. I don't normally use all of that, but however, I like to have more than needed than not have enough, if you get what I'm saying. So if I don't use all of it, I can always just pop the excess in a mold. And I've already marked where my, my epoxy is going to go, so 15 in here and 15 in the other. And these are little cups that I got from Amazon. I've been using these for Ever, you guys forever 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 so these are my mixing cups because when you mix 15 and 15 it's definitely going to be at the top and you don't have enough room to mix so that's why I like to use this little bigger mixing cup and y'all it has been working wonders all right so let's get into pouring the first of the epoxy here I was trying to find something to lift this up on I don't know about you guys, but when you're a crafter, I kind of find all kind of little things to use. All right, so I'm just going to use this little cup thing here. I want to fill it 15 in here. I think that's good. And that was A. And I want to take 15 of B. So having that little black line where you marked it at, it really, really helps you see where to pour your epoxy. All right. And what I found that when you're 
when you're crafting, it's best to kind of keep your workspace clear of clutter and things like that so you don't get really flustered doing the process. So I kind of like, you know, when I'm through it, you know, when I'm done with a certain item, I kind of like to just to move that out of the way. All right, so next I'm going to put my gloves on. I'm going to move this out the way because I don't need it yet. All right, so as you can see, I still have a clean puppy pad here. Put my mask on. All right, so we're going to take the epoxy and we're just going to take the popsicle stick. And we're just going to twirl it around in here. And the goal is to make sure you get each and every drop as much as you can out of here. And the popsicle stick really helps. So you just want to take the, take it and just scrape those edges, run it along the cup, the mixing cup, the larger mixing cup that you have. The, the smaller ones are called medicine cups. And I will try my best to link everything that I'm using below. So depending on what type of epoxy you're using, you just want to make sure you get every drop out. All right, so that looks good to me. We're going to take the other one, pour it in here. So normally for a 20 ounce tumbler, like I'm using today, I normally do about 30 mLs. Sometimes I use it all, sometimes I don't. It just depends on what type of glitter I'm using and how much it takes to actually cover it during the first layer. But like I said, when we use that glitter glue, that glitter glue actually act as like, I don't know, spikely. It kind of filled in all of those little holes from that chunky glitter. And it's going to kind of make these, the process a little bit smoother. All right, so now we have these out the way. All right, so now we're going to take our big, our tongue suppressor here, and we're going to mix it. And there's no rhyme or reason as to how I mix this. When I first started, I was taking a little, some little warm water to kind of mix it up a little bit. Depends on where, you're, where you are in the world and, you know, how your epoxy, you know, comes together and things like that. You may want to do that, but where I'm at, it's just... I think it kind of works for me if I just stir it. But, you know, if it's really cold in my room or really cold outside, I may take a little cup of warm water, sit this over in it just to get a little bit more fluidity. And you want to make sure you're scraping those sides so that A and B mixes together properly. And you see how I'm holding my cup down just to make sure I don't accidentally, accidentally flip it over, which I have done many of times before. So I've done this so much that I kind of know when it's done to stop mixing. I just kind of just mix until my mind says, okay, it's good enough, Jeanette. <laughs> so normally about two to three minutes. Scraping in between. You want to put it down and mix. You want to hold it in your hand and mix. This is just works for me. So basically I mix until my hands get tired. <laughs> All right, so next we're gonna get ready to apply our first coat of epoxy to our tumbler. So I still have the tumbler turner in here. So we're just gonna pop it on. And like I said, these turners from MH Turners are amazing. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of turn it. Uh, I think I want it going away from me. So you guys do not come for me, do not come for me. Okay, so I always take this glove off and I always put on a, 
a thumb glove, a finger glove. And I put it on my index finger. I don't know. I've just been doing this for years, and it's, it's just been working for me. All right? So I always kind of keep this um, glove on this hand as well, and I just use a finger glove on this one. So you want to start with, like, one little line of epoxy and just kind of, you know, cover the tumbler, tumbler a little bit. And then you just start smoothing it on. Like so. And like I said, it helps if you have something under your turner so you're not making a mess. So I'm just going back and forth, just filling with my thumb, my index finger with this thumb glove on, just to make sure each and every area is covered. And you can kind of feel with your finger that the areas are being covered. Because it's gonna feel kind of, you know, it's gonna it's gonna feel kind of slick. I'm trying to keep my elbow out the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, so I make sure I cover, make sure the edges are nice and covered. Make sure I have good coverage in the middle. And I just go back and forth with my index finger and then I just create like little lines, you know, not necessarily trying to rub it in like this. I'm just creating just lines and that just, to me, it helps to get the epoxy really even because essentially what you're doing is just making a even trails along the tumbler. That's what I like to call it. And that's going to keep the epoxy from pulling down here and also from pulling up here and calling what we like to say in the epoxy tumbler world a bubble butt. A bubble, you know, a butt because it it's going to have a, like a lip down here if, you don't, if you're not careful. All right, so the goal is, is to not apply so much during your first coat because nine times out of ten, you may have to apply another coat before you get into your decal process. So once again, do not rush your process because you will have a bubbles butt. All right, so what I like to do before I go on is I like to just take my thumb, hit my index finger, and just take off any excess at the top and the bottom, and I run it back into the cup. And then what I like to do is just do that same process again because I've moved the excess and just lightly make those little lines with my index finger again. And I'm not trying to apply all of this here because if I do, I am going to get some a bump at the top and I'm going to get a bump at the bottom. So a nice consistent coat is what works. All right, so here I have a little um, heating gun. It doesn't have to be anything special. This is just what I use when I'm doing videos. It's just like a little pan heating gun. And you do want to make sure you have your respirator on again, doing this step. And you see the epoxy is a little cloudy. I'm just going to heat it just a little bit in a circular motion just to get that cloudiness out of it.
So I don't know if you guys can see, so I've, you know, cleared all of my bubbles out to, you know, as far as I can see, I can't even talk this morning. All right, so I am going to let this turn for about five to 10 minutes, and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how I remove this tape and clean up those edges. All right, maker, so rule of thumb, I don't know what you got to do, but you got to set a timer for like five to 10 minutes and make sure that you know, you've let it turn at least five to 10 minutes before you um, remove your tape. Because what that does is just, you know, kind of set those edges here. So you remove the tape, your epoxy is not running everywhere because it's kind of, you know, already a little bit nice and set. All right, so let's go ahead and remove the tape. And I just hold the tumbler by the little thing here. And it's still spinning, I'm just slowing it down. All right, so now we have some, these are just some little baby wipe strips that I cut up, just a regular baby wipe. And I wanna take some acetone here. I'm gonna get it a little wet. And what I'm gonna do is just hold the tumbler at the butt end and let me see, turn it. I'm gonna hold it here at this end and go up along that edge where the glitter meets the stainless steel and use my thumb and clean up any of that excess epoxy. It shouldn't be that much because like I said, it's kind of been set a little bit because we let it set. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom. Just let the turner do its thing, holding the baby wipe with the wet, with the acetone on it and clean up that excess epoxy. All right, so rule of thumb, you can just, you know, get the bottom while you're doing it at the same time. And I'll just go back over it, make sure I'm not missing anything. You know, whatever works for you, just make sure you're cleaning, you're not having any epoxy like spilling over into the stainless steel portion at this point. So, and then I like to, you know, just hold my finger here and go on the inside of it. Just make sure I'm cleaning up that as well. Check the bottom and we're good to go. All right, so makers, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna let this turn, since I did not use a fast setting epoxy, I will probably move this over to my bigger turner so I can clear my workspace here and then work on something else. I'm gonna show you guys once I get that over there to show you my bigger turner. But rule of thumb, I am gonna let this turn at least for four to six hours. I'm gonna let it, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, turn it off after that four to six hour mark. And then we're gonna be back for the next steps. All right, maker. So here is my five cup turner from MH Turners. You guys, I've had this for years. So as you can see, it's been through the mill, but it is still going strong. So it has five turners and y'all, I just really love it. And what I love about MH Turners is because the arms are magnetic and you can just pop it on here and it just, it just snaps into place. And my smaller one does the same thing as well. So as you can see, I moved it over here and on my tumbler turner table, I just have some regular boxes, mailboxes, just to keep this area clean. I do have some silicone mats here as well, but basically when these, when these boxes get dirty, I just change them out and it's just been working for me for years. So I'm gonna let this turner, this tumbler continue to turn for four to six hours as I stated before. And then we'll be back for the next steps. All right, makers. So here we are. I did let this dry overnight just to ensure that everything was nice and dry. So we do have some sanding to do. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our electrical tape. And because I don't want the stainless steel portion to be um, scratched up when we do the sanding. I'm gonna apply the electrical tape at the top and the bottom. And you just wanna butt it up against that edge. You will see why when, when we um, go out to sand. So sometimes I double it, you know, go around it about two times and that's just to ensure that when I'm sanding the edge, it doesn't, you know, scratch up the stainless steel portion. And you want to do that on the bottom edge as well. 
So once again, just butt the tape up against the edge. And like I said, if you feel like you're gonna sand too hard, just double it up. So if you happen to sand through the tape, the stainless steel will go unscratched. Alrighty, so now we're gonna go outside and sand. I did, I do have a video as to where I did the full process on my other beginning tumbler video as well. But however, I'm gonna do it again just to show you guys, the, you know, a refresher of how I do the process. All right, let's go. All right, makers, so forgive me. I am outside on my balcony. And so as you can see, we have the cup here and it is kind of rough, you know, so we got, we're gonna fix that up and sand it up. So here I have this little tool that I got from Hobby Lobby. It is by Wynn and you guys, I have been using this forever. It has the little um, attachments that you can change out, the little sanding drills that you can change out when it gets dull. And it's just, it's just been a really good tool for my tumbler making. Um, process so what we're gonna do we're gonna work on the top of the um, tumbler I'm gonna show you how to do that we're gonna work on the bottom edge of the tumbler however when doing this process make sure you have a mask on because epoxy starts you know when you are sanding it starts to fly everywhere and just you want to make sure that you're protecting your lungs because it's very 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 dangerous so as you can see I just have a towel here this is nothing special nothing you you know nothing nothing pretty here this is not a pretty process okay so i'm just keeping it real you guys and i just hope you guys appreciate that so i'm just keeping it real and raw and so you guys can just see the entire process all right so i'm gonna go ahead and take this tool i'm not gonna be able to talk but when i get done you can i'll tell you what i did but i'm gonna take this tool and what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna take the sanding tool and i'm gonna go around the edges real lightly because what i want to do is just get that bump off I want to get that it's not a, a a a thick bump it's just a little you know just a little you know thickness here at the bottom the edges with the glitter and the uh the epoxy meat so i just want to make that clean and nice and smooth all right so you guys let's go ahead and get that process started all right baker so i'm gonna go ahead and turn the machine on and you want to have it on the lowest setting so i'm gonna go here around the edges and what I do is I just start at the top a little bit and I just sand down to the edge. And I do that all the way around. Art makers, that is good enough for me. I have the top edges sanded really smooth and I have the bottom edges sanded really smooth. So now you guys, I'm gonna take you inside where we're gonna try to get some of these bumps off of the middle of the tumbler. And once again, if you notice you have some bumps, some larger bumps, you also can just take the, the um, electric sander and just get those off before you go to the sink. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that so that it save me some time. maker so I just went through just to make sure I got some of those larger bumps 
So when I get to the sink and start cleaning it up with just some regular sandpaper, I don't have to work as hard. All right, Maker, so here we are at our, at our sink, and now we're gonna get ready to do the sanding process. So what I always like to use is the Dawn dish soap, and I'm still keeping the tape on here. And I just like to just lather the whole tumbler and Dawn dish soap. All right, and I never do this process in my kitchen sink. All right, so now I'm gonna just turn on the hot water. And I just have a regular sanding disc here. I think this is 120. And I'm just gonna put my hand in here in the tumbler so I don't drop it. And just lightly sand it. Sometimes I have to put it over the sink, so forgive me if I get out of frame. So what this wet method of sanding does, it gives it, it makes it so smooth to me. I don't know, it just makes it so smooth. But do realize when you when you use a metallic glitter, do not sand. Keep applying epoxy until you get a smooth layer because you would sand the color off metallic, metallic glitter. So I just sand until it looks smooth or it feels smooth. All right, so now I'm just gonna rinse it off. Now the water has gotten nice and hot. And you want to make sure you give it a nice rinse, like rinse it all over. So you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and continue rinsing this. And just to make sure I got everything nice and clean, and then we'll be back to the next step. All right, makers, let's go ahead and finish this tumbler up. So here I have, you guys remember we sanded everything in the sink and got it nice and smooth. So it's ready to go for the de um, decal process. So now we're just really just going to take some alcohol and a spray bottle. And just an old cleaning microfiber rag. And you guys, you want to really clean this. Like really clean it really really well all right so i concentrate on the bike part just make sure i got any kind of loose specks of glitter off so when you finish the tumbler up you don't have to go back and do all of this cleaning up because you've done it beforehand all right so i take the inside take my hand and just clean up everything So you can clean it, clean it as many times as you want, but like I said, you know, I normally just go over about two to three times. All right. So now it's ready to go for our decal process. All right, maker. So in design space, I've already created my decal. So I know I'm probably a little bit behind the curve, but it's still March. So I created the decal that says Happy Go Lucky, and I got some little clovers, and then I got some that doesn't have them. Let me see if I can get it to see my lighting that, that doesn't have the mirror. I mean, the inside portion in it. So I thought this would be really fun just to make this kind of like a monochromatic green and white theme. And that's what we're going to go with. All right. So first, we're going to get ready to apply our decal. And I got this decal from Creative Fabrica. 
And I do have a subscription for Creative Fabrica. I will list that down below so you can get your own. And it really, really saves you a lot of money on decals. So you're not, you know, going to Etsy and paying two and three dollars for a decal. You can just download limitless the um, SVG files. They have a whole lot more, and it just really saves you a lot of money. So in um, Design Space, I went ahead and printed this about by three wide, about two point seven five in height. So I think I want to kind of place this in the middle, and I'm gonna find a find the side that I think is the most smoothest, you know to me and then I'm gonna put my decal here and here I have my cup on a little turner I got this from Cami page boutique and you guys it's wonderful when you're trying to you know keep your cup for rolling side to side so I really use it a lot all right so we're just gonna center this here let's put it I'm gonna put it in the center because I do want to put some clovers above the decal and below the decal. All right, so I have it in the center. So I'm gonna use like the hinge method where I take the decal from the biker. And then while this is still on here, you can just lay your decal perfectly. No issues because it's already like kind of hands right here with the transfer paper. And you just make sure everything is pressed down really well. As you pull back the transfer paper, just make sure you know none of your decal is coming up. If you find it coming up, you know, just press it back down. so cute all right so you guys i'm not gonna bore you with be putting all these other little decals on here i am just gonna do a time lapse i'm just gonna kind of spread spread these little clovers out and just kind of decorate it a little bit nothing fancy and you guys can just sit with me while i do that makers so in this case where we are doing a beginner's tumbler tutorial i really feel that less is more so i'm not going to complicate this tumbler any more than i already have so with this process you just want to make sure all your all your stickers all your decals are laying flat no bubbles so just go back through it make sure everything is nice and flat nothing is lifting you know just double check it just double check everything because the worst case that you want is to have it on the turner with epoxy and you got a decal that's lifting so you do not want that so i really just go over each and every decal and just make sure that everything is nice and clean and everything is nice and flat and then you know just you know just double check it um so what we're gonna do next we're gonna go outside i'm gonna put this bike on the in here and we're gonna get ready to prepare our tumbler for putting the last coats of epoxy on it. All right. All right, so in order to do that, we are going to take our electrical tape again. And since we are doing our final coats of epoxy, we are going to put our electrical tape just a smidging, just a smidging, above the glitter and that really works for me so what i do to keep the electrical tape from lifting you know coming off i just put a nice little slit here fold it in and then i just keep pulling you know that electrical tape you know trying to keep that same line and i'll let you guys see it when i get around it so you just want to try to keep that same line as even as you can and then you clip it off and you fold it. All right, so now you see we have just a small smidgen 
of the glitter, I mean the stainless steel portion, because what we want to do when we do the epoxy is seal that glitter into the stainless steel and everything is nice and sealed from here to here, okay? All right, so we're gonna do the same thing at the bottom. So you guys, this process has been working for me for years. All right, so I am gonna go outside and spray just a light coat, a light coat of Rust-Oleum Matte Clear on this. And I don't know, for some reason, it just helps the epoxy stick better because I've sanded it and it just helps the epoxy stick to it better. I learned that when I first started doing a, um, doing tumblers and it's just been working for me. So I'm gonna go outside and just spray a light clear of Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. All right, makers, so here we are. We're gonna start applying our first coat of epoxy. I, I do have a little cup of warm water here that I've put 20 ml of epoxy, 10 of part A, 10 of part B. I am still using the amazing ClearCast epoxy. So, and I did just put this over in some um, little thing of hot water because it's a little cold here. So I just kind of wanted to be a little bit more pliable and that definitely works. So I'm gonna continue to stir this. And while I'm getting that ready, I'm gonna get heart happy. This is by PDB. I like to add just a little of this when I have, you know, just to add a little shine to some tumblers. Just, you only need a little. So I'm gonna use a popsicle stick to put some in here. And it just adds a little sparkle. All right, so I'm gonna continue to stir this up. And your first coat of epoxy, when you have decals, you want it to be paper, paper, paper thin because you do not want to use a heat gun to try to get, you know, any of the bubbles out. So that works for me. I know probably other make makers do it differently, but I have my first coat over my decal very, very thin. And definitely using just a little hot water in a cup and putting, you know, the bottom of your epoxy in there definitely helps to get it going, you know, when it's kind of, you know, a little bit stiff. So I mix very, very fast. So that's why I apply my epoxy in thin layers because... You know, I don't want to have to use a heat gun to kind of get those bubbles out when I have, when I already have decals on there. All right, so I think that is enough. All right, so now I'm going to take my finger glove, put it on my index finger. I'm going to start my little baby turner here, and we're going to start applying this epoxy. I kind of start off heavy in the beginning just to coat, you know, the entire cup. And then that's when I go back in and start wiping off all of that excess and get it paper, paper thin. And I did let the, the clear coat that I sprayed on, I did let that dry in front of a space fan for about 20 minutes. And you want to make sure that when you have that stainless steel in that tape showing, you want to make sure that you close that in with epoxy. So run your finger through it and just make sure everything is covered. I kind of obsess over this part because I just want to make sure I have a good seal. All right, now that I have everything covered, I'm gonna go back through and just start wiping off all of this excess. And I just use my finger glove just to run it along the cup and get and get it off my finger glove. All 
All right, looks good to me. So makers, I am going to let this, wait, before I do that, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> I'm gonna let this spin for about five minutes, five to 10 minutes, and then we're gonna come back and remove the tape. All right, makers, so this has been spinning for about 10 minutes. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove the tape because you do not want this to dry on here. All right, makers, for some reason, I thought I was recording as to how I clean up the edges from the stainless steel portion. However, my camera was not recording. However, I would demonstrate that process in detail in the next couple of clips. All right, makers, so I did let the first coat of epoxy dry overnight, so now I'm gonna get up into finishing the finishing up this tumbler. So after the first coat of epoxy, I do have a little tiny, some little tiny bumps. So we we're going to take some sandpaper and you want to do this very, very, very lightly, okay? So we're just gonna scuff out those little bumps. So when we apply our flood coat, everything is going to be nice and smooth. So you just want to check it all over, make sure you got all those bumps out. So I'm just going through, if I see some bumps, if I feel some bumps, I'm just shaving those down a little bit with this sandpaper. And this is about, I think it's about 120 grit, yeah, 80 grit sandpaper. And it doesn't matter if you're seeing all these scuff marks because when you apply your flood, flood coat, everything is going to get covered up. So sometimes I don't have to do this process because um, my glitter glitter is really flat, but when you have chunky, it's just like a hit or miss. So just know that. And because we apply such a thin layer, we are gonna have a, some little bumps that we're gonna have to scuff out. All right, Maker, so as you saw before, I've sanded everything nice and smooth. Then I went in with just a microfiber cloth and some spray alcohol and I cleaned it really, really well. You wanna make sure you do that really, really well. And then I went ahead and taped off the top and the bottom, leaving some of the stainless steel portion on that same line that we created with the first layer of epoxy. All right, so now I'm gonna get ready to apply our flood, flood coat of epoxy that I like to call off camera to save time because I know this video is getting really long. I've mixed about 30 mLs of epoxy, that's 15 of part A and 15 of part B. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this up. I'm not gonna do it on camera. And then I'm gonna take you all over to my larger turner and then we're gonna apply a flood coat onto this tumbler. All right, makers, forgive the angle that I'm at. So now I have my cup on the larger turner. I like to have, the, have it on the larger turner where I always use this turner. So now we're gonna get started. I'm gonna start my turner. We have the epoxy all nice and mixed. And like I said, this is about 30 mLs. I probably won't use it all. But like I said before, I'd rather have more than I need than not enough. And at this step, you want to make sure you have all of your PPE on, your gloves, things like that, your mask, etc. And I'm doing the same thing with my fingers, just going alongside of it and making sure I'm concentrating on the edges. So I'm going back up here, making sure I don't have any excess, like clumping up in areas and kind of spreading that out through the middle. See all this excess right here? Just making sure it's not lumping up in one area.
once again, I'm just using my glove finger to just make little ripples in the tumbler. That's that's just my way of doing it, just to make sure I know I'm carving everything and it's you know kind of been dispersed out evenly. All right, so like I said, I like to go through the top and the bottom and kind of, you know, get all that excess off so I won't have any bump, you know, little butts at the top and the bottom. And then what I like to do is just kind of go back through and make those ripples again before I finalize it. Checking the top and the bottom, making sure I don't have any, you know, excess like lumping up. See what I'm doing with my finger? I'm just taking at the top and just kind of smoothing that down. Sometimes I add a little tad more to the middle. But like I said, I've been doing this since 2019 and you're going to find what works for you. So just be patient. You're not going to get the perfect tumbler when you first start off. All right, so the reason why I like to use have it on this turner is because I like to use my heat gun. This is a heat gun I got from Amazon. It's called Warrior. So forgive my angle, you guys. I'm just trying to make sure that I can um, get everything in frame. So I'm gonna go over it with the heat gun. You probably, you, were, you will not be able to hear me, but you do not want to get close to it. You just wanna kinda, you see where it looks white and cloudy. You just kinda wanna break all that up. Heart maker, so I think that looks good. So I am going to let this turn for at least about 10 to 15 minutes to make sure I get a good clean seal here where it's not dripping. Because right now I've heated the epoxy and if I were to remove the tape, it would start spilling over into the stainless steel that I do not want it to spill over into. So I'm gonna let this spin. So one thing I did want to note for you guys is that you want to make sure your tumbler is level. So if you, you know, just put a leveler here. It doesn't have, you know, just one of those little basic leveler tools. It just makes sure your tumbler is level. You don't have it like one side jacked up and one side jacked up on the other side because that is going to cause you to have a bump at the top and the bottom when, you, you know, when your epoxy is finished. So you want to make sure your tumbler is level. So the reason why I use the heat gun on the, on the, um, on the flood coat is just to make sure I get a nice clean finish and there are no like, you know, lumps or anything in my epoxy everything is nice and smooth there's no cloudiness in my epoxies no you know everything is nice and smooth so i think i, I have achieved that on this tumbler so you just want to make sure you take your time so you're not going to get the perfect tumbler the first time you create a tumbler it's going to be a process so you have to work up until you get there all right so you guys so we're going to let this finish and then i'm going to come back and show you how i'm going to re re remove the tape it's going to be the same process that we did before just cleaning it up with acetone on a baby wipe and get it in all finish. All right, makers, so let's get on to finishing up this tumbler. So it's been turning for about 10 to 15 minutes. So we're gonna remove the tape. We're gonna remove the tape from the bottom. And as before, I just have some little baby wipe strips I've cut up. And I'm just gonna put some acetone in it for my little acetone pump bottle here. And we're just gonna run our, excuse me if my head gets in the way, we're just gonna run our baby wipe along that line. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing at the bottom. So if you let it sit long enough, the tape is gonna form that line for you. And you don't have to be obs as obsessive as I am. You can do it one or two times, but I kind of do it a lot. So 
So I'm just letting the tumbler do the work, the toner do the work, and I'm just holding my ba my wet baby wipe with the acetone on it. I'm just holding it there until it gets a nice clean line. I'm gonna recheck the bottom. Wipe off any excess that may have gotten on the bottom of the tumbler. And we are good to go. All right, you guys. So I am going to let this spin overnight. Just to ensure I get a nice, good cure on it. And then we'll be back to show you the final product of creating your very first tumbler. Well, this will be my second tutorial on this channel. But like I said, a lot of my process changed a little bit. So I wanted to create another video. All right, you guys, stay tuned for the final reveal. Makers, makers, we are done with this tumbler. You guys, I know it was a long process, but like I said in my intro, I just really wanted to highlight some of the new processes. I, I don't think really a lot has changed. It's just that, you know, I just wanted to get out a new tum beginner tumbler tutorial video just to try to, you know, freshen up some of the process that I have, processes that I have implemented in my tumbler making journey so i really hope this video has you know helped you guys so once again this glitter has been really hard to photograph and really hard to read on camera so you guys i deeply apologize for that but i just really want to create something bright and cheery you know for the month of march and i just really you know think that this tumbler that says happy go lucky really highlights that so let me see if i can focus in here there we go y'all look at that so cute so cute this glitter is so bright and it just makes me i don't know it just makes me so happy it just makes me hope so happy so makers i really hope that you got some insight and some new ideas and you know that's just gonna you know spring you forward and creating you know new tumblers and so makers i really hope that um, like I said, this Tumblr um, tutorial will help you. And once again, all the supplies that I use will be linked and listed below to the best of my ability. You know, some things are, you know, are probably duplicates. But like I said, I do have a video that I created probably two years ago. That's probably going to be more in depth. This one is a little less in depth, but it still covers a lot of the basics of creating a tumbler. So once again, makers, I really think that I really hope that you got some insight and this video is helpful. So once again, makers, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. Oh, I'm forgetting one thing. I'm forgetting one thing. Our quote, our quote. So let's get into it. All right. So the quote for today's video is you are strong in mind body and soul you guys i just really think that you know when i'm going through medically it's really resonating this so i just really have to tell myself that you know when i'm dealing with this pain that i just really just have to tell myself you know it's mind body and soul and, you know i'm gonna get over this and i'm gonna find some answers even if it means i have to have a you know surgery on my shoulder or whatever the case may be I just want some relief from this pain. So once again, makers, just please, you know, I appreciate all the prayers and the, you know, the kind thoughts that you can give me. So once again, makers, that is enough for me. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. That really helps my channel out. My channel is slowly, slowly growing. And I think that, you know, when I see all the comments coming from you guys, that just really makes me feel a lot better. So I think that is enough for me. I will be having some more videos out to you guys very soon. And I'm just really excited about the new year. So you may, until the next video, you guys take care. And most of all, continue creating.